Hello, Zero K fans, and welcome to Shadow Fury CC3 with an expedition match stream for you all. Now, start out with a game between Lowry and Feltos on Iceland. And sec, go. So Iceland is not a map we have seen a great deal of recently. It's it's an interesting map, very large map, has star locations over the south. Well, the west where Lowry started with tanks, and northeast where Cloaky Bots are Failthos's choice. So, Failthos is... Okay, I don't know how many people know who Failthos is. We haven't seen him in any of the tournaments so far, but he is clearly not a new player. He just has not been participating in any of the recent tournaments. Lowry, however, has, or if he has, hasn't been in the brackets I've casted. Lowry has, and we know he does very well. So in this case, I'd say he is definitely the favorite to win. Probably, in, well, tanks, definitely his style. Totally makes sense for him, especially on a large flat map like Iceland. And this map, probably going to see the players take the little expansions over off here. It's kind of a safe expansion. You can easily get to it. There's only this one ramp that goes by and nothing else can easily get up there other than gunships or planes, which we'll probably see fairly soon on this map, just given the size of it. Louder starting out with a few early Panthers. Panther Welder, nothing out of the ordinary there. Pushing out from that while Failthos gets a Rector fairly quickly. Only one Glaive, just to scout out. Nothing too heavy. He doesn't really want to raid too much, just wants to know what's going on. And now he knows that Lowry's going for heavy tanks, in which case he's probably going to be switching... Well, see what he decides to do. I think he might end up switching over to Rocco's just to avoid the Panthers entirely, but we'll see what he goes for. Currently just continuing to build up Glaives and expanding to the north as well, while Lowry also expanding to that safe area I mentioned before. It's over here. Both players are taking full advantage of the economy they are provided safely. So it should be a fairly high-end game, but yeah. So it's going to be... Cloakies and heavy tanks. I really comes down to how much Failthos can get around Lowry's army. Where Lowry's army, is, like where Lowry's army is, his army really can't easily be. I mean, the Glaives do okay here, but they do not. They can catch up to the Panthers, but barely. And the Panthers just one-shot them. The best thing that Failthos can do with those Glaives is to try to avoid the Panthers. Just avoid the units. There aren't that many units in a heavy tank factory, especially at the start of the game. Cloaky Bot has far more units. They can't easily engage head-on, not Glaives at least. Rockos would be able to, Zeus's should be able to, but not Glaives. Actually, Zeus's and Rockos are the problem of speed. But yeah, Glaives can get around the units. And actually, Panther moving into a really bad spot. Actually, it's gonna be cut, it's gonna be cut down by these Glaives, just barely. And no, not quite. Survives with 19 health left, but it looks like that one last Glaive, if it gets close, it's gonna have a chance. It, nope, never mind what I'm thinking. It's gonna get hit first. Boy. Okay, that was, that was silly of me. Of course it's going to get hit first. <laughs> I've, we've seen that the Panther's in longer range. However, the Panther is able to retreat back home and is able to repair. That kind of sucks. If Felthos could have taken out the Panther, especially near his base, and reclaimed it, that would have been quite a lot of metal. That would have been a good 120-so metal that he could have just straight up gotten. But, unfortunately, didn't manage to do that. I really don't agree with the use of Glaives here. I mean, I understand because it's a large map. He wants to be able to raid around. I don't agree with the means, or the way he is, in fact, using them. I definitely don't agree with him using them as a direct assault force. I mean, yes, against one Panther, enough Glaives will be able to get through with many losses, but once Reapers start coming out, once Kodachi, I mean, Kodachis are coming out already, and that's just going to tear the Glaives to shreds. Like I said, the biggest weakness of heavy tanks is that they can't easily go to one part of the map and just protect it. They can't easily go from one part of the map to the other. I mean, they're, they're kind of quick, but there aren't very many units that you can build quickly. Not at the stage of the game, anyway. I mean, once you get to the point where the players have 30, 40 metal, then the heavy tank factor is really going to shine. And as you see, the Kodachi is able to deal a lot of damage to these Glaives. I mean, most of them will survive, but a lot of them are dying in the process. Any follow-up attack, if there was two Kodachis here, all these Glaives would be dead. Just bear that in mind. So, nine Glaives benefiting from their auto-healing. That's the one thing. Glaives do have the auto-healing, so that attack... Definitely worked out. That worked out for Failthos. That was a clean win. Unlike with the Panther, but... Lowry just needs to build up, get a large enough economy. Going for air as well, just for extra support. Probably going to get Shadows to take out Failthos' commander. Let's see, actually, double-check the commanders, too. Failthos... Where is his commander? His commander's over south. Sportcom, Particle Beam, Radar Module. 
while... So no E-Cell, but still 8 energy. While Lowry, on the other hand, Riot Cannon, and that's it. Both players are pretty even in terms of how their economies are going. Felpaz is slightly behind, but once again, Lowry does have to worry about the fact that he can't be everywhere at once. I'm just surprised Felpaz isn't taking advantage of it. Extending one or two glaives down here, or maybe, okay, four or five, because the weaver, the, not weaver, what am I saying? Not Spider Factory, this is the Welder. Anyway, one of the Panthers goes down, explodes like a tick, and the other glaives is still taking some damage. So the thing is, there are enough glaives right now, but three Kodachis here, they will be able to tear these glaives to shreds. All these glaives are gonna, well, half these glaives are gonna burn to death. The other Kodachi's coming in here. All these glaives are now dead. Complete win for Lowry there. One of the glaives goes to retreat. It will be able to successfully retreat, but like I said, more than one Kodachi, and those glaives will die with very few losses. Now, okay, there we go. Zeus's are coming out. Zeus's are coming out. Bit of a better choice there against the heavy tanks. I'm still not entirely sure why he's going for so many glaives, though. Just because he's not harassing around the map with them. I mean, admittedly, there's one thing to bear in mind. Lowry does have radar, although he doesn't have a whole lot of it, but he does he does have radar, so obviously the glaives could be approached. I'm thinking more splitting up the glaives so that Lowry's forced to split his own forces. One of the Kodachis is able to get a free kill on a glaive. Well, two Kodachis are able to get a free kill. While the other glaives go to the north, and the Kodachis are not aware of this. Lowry is not aware of this happening. Just now has radar coverage over the center, but does not have radar coverage of the north. Now realizes this is happening, but the glaives are in his territory. The Kodachi coming from behind. It's going to get torn apart by these glaives here. That's one Kodachi down at the cost of one glaive, basically. And Lowry's commander is going to be in a tight spot here. That laser not quite up yet, but the riot cannon is able to get rid of the glaives. Why am I saying it's a tight spot? The riot cannon, of course. If it was a beam laser, it would be a different story, but the riot cannon definitely able to take care of that many units at once. Now, that being said, these glaives are distracting this Kodachi, and every unit counts with heavy tanks. Another Kodachi coming in here will run into this Lotus. We'll be able to take care of the Metal Extractor, though. This Metal Extractor is dead. Felthos might try to repair it. He is trying to repair it. Okay, that's going to save it. One unrepaired Metal Extractor will die to one shot, but repaired, it's fine. Zeus is now on the field, though. Felthos able to get those up, and still more Glaives not going for anything else. Actually... Snipers at this stage in the game would not be a bad idea. Would slow down the tanks, killing one of their big advantages, and they're anti-heavy units. Tanks are, if nothing else, heavy units. Especially this Reaper coming in here. Now we have the Reaper. Seven half minutes into the game, we have the Reapers. We have Shadows as well, which Lowry has been careful to keep hidden. Beldoth has not managed to scout in far enough to be able to see that there are Shadows coming in, and they will be approaching his commander, and they will kill it. At this point, Lowry is actually slightly... He's been slightly hesitant in the economy game this entire time. Failed Dots, I should point out, has been floating a lot. He's been very much behind in the production game. Now just getting a caretaker, but even then, he's going to need another caretaker to spend all the resources he has. Which is what he's getting. He's aware of that, but a little bit late, he has been floating. However, he's also... Now, there we go. This is what I want him to do earlier. Harassing around the side. He needs to avoid the commander, though. That Riot Cannon is unbeatable by these Glaives. It, it will kill them all. These Glaives... Ah... These glaives could have gone around and dealt with other things. Now the shadows are coming in. This is where we're going to see Feldhaus' commander go down. Kodachi to finish it off. Feldhaus will not heal up in time. This Kodachi, it's going to have a bit of a gauntlet to run through, but it's one shot. All it's to get off is that one shot, and it's not going for it. Lowry retreats wisely at that point because the commander had gone too far back. But still, one shot. Doesn't really matter. These shadows will be returning fairly soon, and once that happens, the commander will go down and... Thalthos will fall behind. Actually, he's starting to fall behind even more in economy. Lowry has managed to get all these expansions here. All these medley stretches. The Glaives didn't manage to defend. I mean, they would have gone through these defenders without too much issue. Two of them would have, two or three of them would have died to the defenders. There still would have been a couple more left to kill off the medley stretcher, then kill off this medley extractor. Then this defender would have finished them off. But still, a bunch more. Okay, there we go. Now this is a good raiding force off to the side. However, that's, like I said, still kind of late. I'm just surprised he's going for it this late. Because defenders are... Well, defenders are up everywhere. Admittedly, they aren't the strongest things, but it's not even a matter of defenders. It's a matter of the fact that Lowry has managed to expand around the map. Like, that's the important thing. He doesn't know where Feltas' commander currently is, but he has managed to expand everywhere across this map. And there we go. He's found Feltas' commander, and 
Failed Dodge's commander about to go down. That is it for the commander. It is dead. Felthos now almost half as strong economically as Lowry, and he is shooting for Lowry. He's been shooting for Lowry's commander way too hard with these glaives. Going for the mechs is a much better plan, but still, the glaives, they should not, in general, don't attack a commander with glaives. It's not a good idea. Especially not a commander with a riot cannon. That's just suicide. You're just asking for your glaives to die. And this is what I was talking about, but he needed more glaives. Like I said, three or four glaives is going to need to buffer these two defenders. Once that's done, the rest of them can kill off the Medley Stratter and the defenders. Unfortunately, he only had three glaives going in, and they all died. Air Factor, however, has been up for Felthos for a little while. He does have Avengers a little bit late for his commander, but he's still going to be able to defend against the Shadows and the Phoenixes that are coming around. Double check how many Arianists are there right now. No, well, okay. How many Arianists are there right now? There are 12 Avengers between two players, and... Only two shadows left, so a couple of them have been killed. But this is the real story. The Reapers are marching around the map. There's five Reapers, one of them in production. The other four are out. Going to map with the Zeus's, and I think this match, this particular battle should probably decide the game. I mean, at this point, Lowry has the advantage. But if these Reapers can be destroyed, that might actually help. So this goes, the Reapers are attacking. The Zeus's did not quite respond in time. They did not get the first shot off. And they are really not the things to use. Like I said, snipers would be the option. They'd be the option of choice. Admittedly, slowly but surely, this is getting EMP'd out. But that's one Zeus down for barely EMPing out one of the Reapers. Getting it down to maybe a third of... Two-thirds of its health, that's... That's nothing. Like, sniper, on the other hand, that would be the way I'd say it should go. Like, that's what exists for anti-heavy. Admittedly, it's... Well, 1,500 damage a shot. They're slow shots, but that's a third of the Reaper's health. Well, almost, sorry, a fourth of the Reaper's health, right off the bat. Well, a little under a fourth of the Reaper's health. They take five shots, kill a single Reaper, and admittedly, that's, they would have to be hidden, because they are the same cost as Reaper individually, but still, as a support force, snipers would be a great option to have here. Especially since it would weaken, it would weaken the Reapers enough that the Zeus's would be effective since EMP is dependent on the current health of a unit rather than its maximum health, but it doesn't matter at this point. There's a fairly certain space in the current health. If someone in chat knows that I'm wrong, it's it's gonna... just let me know. Like, If EMP is based on max health, but I'm pretty sure it's based on current health. At any rate, snipers would still get rid of these guys. Enough air units able to push them away though. Failthos does manage to defend his base from the Reapers. However, to the south... Five Kodachis are set up to come in and deal with this entire part of the economy. Failthos doesn't have much to defend this side of his base. A lot of a lot of Lotuses, but not much else. And in the north, actually, Lowry winning the air war. I'm afraid I missed that. Lowry wins that air war and managed to push in. He's going to push some of the Kodachis as well now. So Reapers in the north, Kodachis from the south, and these Lotuses are going down too quickly. The Zeuses are... Well, actually, still holding the line there, but the Kodachi is able to burn up all those Lotuses, moving back just to try to not die. A Rector cannot repair these guys in time. The two front Lotuses do burn at the cost of one Kodachi, but the rest of them are going to come in here, get rid of the Metal to get rid of the other Lotuses. And the Reapers coming in from the north, get rid of everything else. Let's double check. Actually, now, now's a bad time to double check what's going on in the bases, because what matters is this battle right here, and this is probably going to decide the game as well. I mean, Fail Thoughts has been steadily destroying Lowry, or sorry, steadily having his economy destroyed by Lowry, and not being able to destroy Lowry's economy. He's steadily been trying, but he hasn't... His glaives really haven't ex just been thrown away attacking directly, and right now it makes a bit more sense, because the Reapers have a hard time dealing with glaives. Not with Zeus's, though, with Rocco's. The Rocco's are not in a fight order. Or if they are, they were not dodging properly. However, they are going to be bombed out by the Shadows and possibly the Phoenix, but... Air War has gone to Lowry. The Ground War has pretty much gone to Lowry. Felthos probably just doesn't know how behind he is at this point. I mean, Lowry at this point... Oh my goodness. Yeah, that's a lot of build power being powered into that factory right there. There's got to be at least 30 build power effectively. Well, split between those. There's 25 build power between the two factories. That's huge. Especially for heavy tanks. Especially when your basic assault unit costs 850 metal. Having 25 build power in there, that's 25 metal a second. That speeds things up a fair bit. And Felthos getting a Razor to try to get back in the... At least... Maybe not win the arrow, but at least stop him from getting his factory directly. 
At this point, Lowry does not appear to have any anti-air defenses. He's not concerned with that at all. He went entirely for unit anti-air. No static defense anti-air for Lowry. And just building up the north as well. He doesn't... He's going to repeat... Sorry. Retreat... Let me try again. Retreat his Reapers and repair them. That is what I meant to say. Unfortunately, my tongue went away from me. I apologize. However... Yes, these Reapers are getting repaired, so that combat did nothing to them, but it did quite a bit to fail to us, causing him to lose a lot of Zeus's. Admittedly, he can reclaim all these fields. He should. But he needs to reclaim these fields. Well, I don't know why he's reclaiming this tree. That's excessing. The tree is entirely energy. He has plenty of energy. What he needs is metal, and that's what these Zeus's will provide. I'm just surprised he's not going for that. It, yeah, he's probably going to lose the unit sooner or later, but at least he gets the metal in the meantime. He gets a bit more metal. He has enough caretakers to use it all. I mean, he has... 40 build power being pushed in here, but only 20 metal. So ultimately 10 being pushed in to each factory. As if the caretaker wasn't there, really. The caretakers don't matter at this point. Or matter very little. Maybe it's a bit of a prioritization measure, but other than that, they really don't matter all that much. Actually, no, not even prioritization. Only when it goes above 10. Looks like there is some reclaim going on, but that's down here, and really it's just... It looks like the... Yeah, it's a reclaim circle, so a lot of the trees are getting grabbed as well. Well, Feltos moving forward. He does have Rockos this time around. He had a few in the last battle, and now finally getting most of his army composed of Rockos. Kind of about time, I'd say. Like I said, the Glaives were not a bad idea. They just were attacking the army head-on. You don't want to do that. You want to attack this area. You want to attack this area, especially. You want to attack where your opponent isn't when they're playing heavy tanks. Unless you can attack them directly, but Glaives certainly cannot. Like, Glaives really are not assault units. It's easy to be fooled that way because the Raider... Raider game can be very strong part of the game, but... It's important to note that ultimately the raider game involves raiders. They don't. It doesn't involve assault units, and there are very powerful counters to raiders. And once they're deployed, it's very difficult for a raider to get in. It's just that you can't easily deploy them everywhere at once. At this point, Lowry has such an overwhelming advantage. He's got at least a dozen reapers. Okay, not quite a dozen reapers. Okay, Carper confirming that EMP is current health. That's what I thought. Just wanted to be sure. So yeah. EMP is, well, not that useful in this case, regardless, because it is based on current health, and 6,800 health is a lot. When you consider that Zeus is, I mean, even if they deal, they're dealing a third of the, or, sorry, fifth of the max health in damage there, but it's just not very much. Was that a Leecho? That was a Leecho. Okay, Lowry is just throwing his money into, he doesn't care, he knows he's won. He's throwing his money into Leechos in a game like this, where he doesn't need to, he knows he's won. I think Feltos has realized this too. Let's see if he's continuing. No, he's continuing to build at this point. Not yet throwing in the towel, but I think once this battle is over, he's going to just GG. I, I think he's realized just how overwhelmed he is because none of these Reapers died. I, no, not one Reaper died in that fight. Whereas all of Feltos' units did. And at this point... Lowry just has way too many numbers. Veltas had a chance to get rid of Lowry beforehand. Because Lowry at first had, did not have the numbers, but once Heavy Tank gets numbers, man, countering it is not easy. It's possible, yes, but it's not easy. And I think at this point, Veltas is just too behind to be able to do it. He's a third of his, he has half the economy, a third of the economy he's not reclaiming. And Alicho is going to come in here, it's going to finish off the factory. And once that happens, it'll be game. Or, no, it's not! No, it's getting distracted. Actually, it's getting shot down from the looks of it. No, it's going to still go to the Clickbot Factory. Able to not quite kill it, actually. Able to damage it. But it's going to go down to the process. Well, not a bad kill, but doesn't matter. Feltos still GG's, throws in the towel, and that is game. Hope you enjoyed that, and I'll have another one for you guys shortly. So stay tuned.